is grade A American-made bear squat. But I got an Air Force fax. It says the Trilateral Commission was inside Area 51 on June 10th, 1974. Right, and MJ is still bringing the ball up at the United Center. Now listen, my little misguided friend, I may be working at the tiniest radio station in the city of Chicago, but our microphones work. A fax is not an original. Well, it could be. Survey says! <laughs> Moron! Folks, please, come on, we're smarter than that. What is my credo? Never stop questioning. This is the Neil Roberts Program, broadcasting live from the bunker somewhere deep inside the loop, my own little corner of anonymity. Now, if somebody has a real conspiracy out there, something worth firing my synapses over, please do give me a call. We've got a listener on a cell phone with a comment on that last call. Uh, that would be the voice of my lovely and talented producer, Angela Somerset, who's in our main studio back at the corporate high-rise. It's an old friend on line one, the middleman. Double M, nah, hit me! There was no way the Trilateral Commission was in Area 51 that day. They were in Delaware. How do you know that? We had brunch. I sat on the other side of a two-way mirror eating optimized nutritional supplement. Eating what? It's a long story. You still running from the PTBs? PTBs? Ah, uh, you're slipping, middleman. The powers that be. What did they do to you, anyway? They separated me from my family when I was a little boy. I barely remember my mom and dad. I've been searching for them for a long time now. Well, I have no sardonic response to that, only to say that that kind of dedication comes from deep within. I kind of envy you. I don't have anyone that close. With the exception of one person, and uh, she doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> but that, my friend, is a very long story, and I know you've got to run. As always. Take care, and as always, a very enlightened call from our friend, Double M. Let's now go to a disgruntled caller on a mobile phone. Hit me! Hey, Squealer, are you getting my postcard? Well, you know, my friend, I get bushels of fan mail every day. I sent a package this time. Express. Oh, here it is, the package. You hear me opening it on the air. Here we are. I hope it's not over the top. Oh, God. Yeah, it's a dead rat. Sort of symbolizes your status in life. Choices made, choices to live with or die from. Like the song says, this is the end, my friend. Watch out for that cheese, Neil. I'm sorry, Patty. Hey, Neil, you still there? I don't hear anything. What's the matter, Neil? Rat got your tongue? Love to see the expression on your face right now. In fact, that's just what I'll do. I broke out, I spent every moment searching for my past. He's a pretender. A genius who can become anyone that he wants to be. The center wants him alive. Preferably. He defends the weak and abused. Life's a gift. If Neil was attacked, how come the 
the police aren't all over it. Because Neil broadcasts from an unknown location in the city. Neil, if you're listening, please call. It's been 37 minutes. We're worried about you. Cut the crap, lady. It's another one of Neil's damn publicity stunts. Hey, moron! Who's this? If Neil's mission in life is to expose conspiracies and lies, do you think he'd create one? <laughs> Hell yes. Then go back to the village, pal. The one missing the idiot. You're listening to WL I can explain. Explain it to the police. You would have called them after Neil was attacked if you wanted them involved. Who the hell are you? Someone running from the PTBs. Middleman? My name is Jared. I know you're very afraid for Neil. I could hear it in your voice. Look, I know this sounds crazy, but trust me. Let me use this show to help you find Neil. We're back, and you're listening to The Middleman. While we wait for word from Neil, I'm going to tell you a little story that's uh, both near and dear. It's about a boy that was raised by an organization shrouded in secrecy. A Delaware corporation unlike any other. Weird, I know, but the truth often is. That was the real thing. So are they going to buy the place? They already did. I was going to tell you earlier, but I was waiting for You don't have to way. clear it with me. There's something else. I, uh, I bought a new house for us to restore together. It's in Portland. I love Maine. Oregon. Come with me, Papa. Oh, to Oregon? Why not? Well, first of all, I have a career. Oh, right, right, right. Same career that gave you an ulcer. It nearly killed you. It's not just the job. My family? You buy a plane ticket, you visit. You don't know my family. Look, it's just not a decision I can make right now, here, in my bathroom. What are you scared of? Nothing. You're just asking a lot. I need to leave soon. Your status in life. Choices made, choices to live with, or die from. Like the song says, this is the end, my friend. I'm coming to your place right now. Neil called you before he was attacked. Didn't he? He wanted to call the police. But he begged you not to. He insisted. He told me to keep up appearances until he called again. And to stay away from his place. It's life and death, he said, and not just mine. And then he said... What? 
He said, Ange, if you don't hear from me tomorrow, I'm gone. Forever. And we don't have much time. Nobody heard a thing. I told him not to live in an abandoned building. They're the best places to hide. Shot through the door. And fired at Neil. Chasing him along this wall. The grenade landed over there. Neil's only escape was through this door. Jared left this sign for us outside his place in Chicago. And this house is in Blue Cove. Traffic was a bitch. Or you slept in. Isn't that your plumber's house? Thomas is a carpenter. And yes, he sold it, so Jared can read the classifieds. Is your boy leaving town? Oregon, maybe. Now that commute is a bitch. Call me when the cleaners are back from Chicago. Don't give me that look, Sid. Thomas is moving, isn't he? He wants you to go to leave Blue Cove. Leave the center? Your father's gonna freak. Thanks for pointing that out. Parker, a long time ago, I lost a family because the powers that be chose my path. Don't let them dictate you. So who is she? Someone this psycho knows is important to Neil. Neil's daughter? Maybe. One thing's for certain. She means the world to him. Although they never met. You got all that from the postcard? I don't have anyone that close. With the exception of one person. And uh, she doesn't even know I exist. <laughs> We have to think like he thinks. Feel what he feels. Never stop questioning. Neil Sinoff? Albert Einstein once said the most important thing is to never stop questioning. This stuff is all about the girl on Neil's bulletin board. He's documented her entire life. Her name is Patricia Marie Lorenz. She's 19 years old. She's had a degenerative nerve disorder since she was a little girl. If we find her, we may find Neil. Or the guy who's chasing him. This psycho's not gonna let up, is he? No. He's going to keep following him. Hunt him down like an animal. Keep him from the people he loved. Make his world a living hell. Till it ends. One way or another. I mean, come on. What kind of low forehead sends dead rats through the mail? It's the television, Double M. It makes us do things. Only if you let it. Well, I gotta go. 
Urkel's sending me a secret message. My next caller, please. They can replace that son of a bitch, but Neil can't hide. And why should he have to? You'll have to ask him. He forced this. He put his own ass in my crosshairs. How did he do that? He ambushed my life, a sucker punch. But actions have consequences. And this time around, I'm in control. Control? Like ringing a little bell. It's not the bell. It's who's ringing it. I guess that's you, Pavlov. It is okay if I call you Pavlov, isn't it? Maybe you should call me PTB. Oh, are you one of the powers that be? I'm the only one. Pavlov, you still there? You haven't disappeared on me, have you? Neil took away what was important to me. Maybe I'll return the favor. If you're such a powerful PTB, why not tell us who you are? No, no. Anonymity. That's where the real power is. Even Neil, the coward, would tell you that. He had to get me with my back turned. Now, I'm the shooter in the book depository. I'm the bullet you don't see coming. We all have the right to face our accusers. Oh, what a lovely thought. Maybe you could write that in Neil's eulogy, huh? You're listening to WLNJ, talk radio for Chicago. You hear that? He's near the L train. As long as he's nowhere near Neil. Neil! Angela. Angela. Neil, thank God. Where are you? That was him on the air. The son of a bitch isn't gonna quit. I found someone who can help. Neil, this is the middleman. You have to stop running. Stay out of this. You don't know what you're dealing with. I know about Patricia Marie. No. Not Patty. You stay away from Patty. You hear me? They said it's hard enough with one... Neil, listen to me. Get out of there right now. Just go. Neil. Him and the police don't know anything about it. It's over, Jared. It's encrypted. I forgot who I was dealing with. Even I don't know his password. Foundation. Neil never mentioned anything about it. He's made some sizable donations. Supports research for nerve disorder. It also pays bills for Patricia's at-home care. According to this, he had her move to a new apartment about six months ago. Right after the threat started. I'm just admiring how well you turned out. Daddy, I... Damn. I need to... You some help from that friend of yours. What's his name? Tom? Oh, yeah. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned Thomas. He's... You got a new project, I know. Oregon. It's kind of far away, isn't it? 
How do you know? Your brother's a damn gossip. I cannot imagine my daughter hanging wallpaper. <laughs> Who knows, I might be good at it. Ah, trust me. Renovating an old house is like pounding sand down a rat hole. It never ends. Besides, what would I do without my angel? Hey, did I ever tell you why I call you that? No. Ah. Well, you're about three and a half years old. We were at the summer place. My place? Hmm. I was high up on a ladder. I was trying to fix a leak in the skylight of your mother's studio. It's about to take the last step when suddenly you screamed, Daddy, broken. Ah, sure enough, taking that last step, I'd have fallen 30 feet down onto the rocks. You saved my life. Your mother said, you are my guardian angel. <laughs> you leave me. I might as well be dead. My parents were killed in an accident at Fort Bragg when I was little. I don't know what I would have done without the New Vista Foundation. It wasn't the money either. It, it was the tapes. They've been sending these every month for years. <laughs> some are philosophical, some are inspirational, some just stories. Always the same voice. These books helped me learn get focused, opened up the world for me, helped me see the possibilities I'd given up on. I write for websites now. <laughs> for the longest time, I tried to find out who was funding the foundation, but I never got close. Do you mind if we listen to a little bit of the tape? Oh. Anna and Vronsky found themselves alone in the square, waiting for the snow to fall. It had been several hours since their last meal. All I had was him. It's a nice voice. I know he's just their reader and all, but he sounds so... real, you know? I rejected a lot of people, but... Irony of ironies, I couldn't reject him, because I don't know him. I think of him as a guide. He's kind of the reason I'm still fighting. I'm still alive. Neil dedicates his life to her. Now he's in danger because of her? And she doesn't even know who he is. It's another dead end. Not exactly. Pavlov is still out there. We just have to get him talking again. I'll tell you about the powers that be. When they can't get to you, they go after the people that you love. That's what they did to Neil. The PTBs try to rip these people out of your life, your guts right along with them. But that's where they make their mistake. Because the people that you love may be your weakness, but they're also your strength. They keep you fighting. They keep you one step ahead of the demons who breathe fire into your soul. Line one, it's him, Jared. Pavlov. Go ahead, line one. You got me in tears over here. Tears of laughter. Why don't you stop hiding behind your phone? I've been inside your head. I don't just see a tortured maggot. No, I see a lonely, pathetic man whose only companions are his rage and the power of his anonymity. You sound a lot lonelier than I'll ever be. What, not enough love from mom and dad? Yeah, I've been listening to your kidnapping sob story. My parents aren't exactly the issue here. No, I'm guessing they're your whole life. The life you're desperately looking for night and day. 
Those little doubts, they gotta be gnawing in your gut right now. And what doubts are those? Maybe my folks wrote me off. Maybe they think that their little boy is dead. Maybe they're dirt napping. Here you are running all over creation, searching, and they're nothing but worm food. You know something, Pavlov? When I find you... You're never gonna find me. I'm one of Neil's secrets. Contradiction inside a paradox wrapped up in an enigma. The kind of conspiracy that even he can't reveal. He forgot something, orphan boy. What's that? I know where you work. You're listening to WLNJ, talk radio for Chicago. A trace is no good. Parker, a long time ago I lost a family because the powers that be chose my path. Don't let them dictate yours. Your father's gonna freak. Your mother said, you're my guardian angel. You leave me. I might as well be dead. a mistake. Man, give me the gun. You're working for him? Pavlov said that he was one of your secrets. What does that mean? None of your business. Just stay away from Patty. He'll kill her. You were in her apartment. Why? I was trying to find you so I could help you. She's not your daughter. Who is she? I don't deserve. That's not true. You made her a fighter. She shouldn't have had to fight. I was a doctor. In the army. How did you hurt her? Her disorder is congenital. Spare me the official line of crap. mother was a, a patient. No, she, she was a subject. An experiment? 
government sponsored. Oh. Oh, half of me wishes that it was one big conspiracy. I could, I could just laugh it off on my show. But we were just testing vaccines on soldiers, very routine stuff. Or so I thought. We knew Patty's mom was pregnant. When some test results came back that suggested she might have an adverse reaction. I was told to let it go. So I did. I was a coward. I convinced myself that my superiors knew better. I got transferred across country and I ignored the consequences until I until I heard about the car crash. That's when you found out about Patty's disorder. And that's when you started providing for her. <laughs> I didn't speak up. Never stop questioning. Neil, you've dedicated your whole life to speaking up. <laughs> to everybody but her. <sighs> Pat Love is right. I, I'm a fraud. I mean, I bitch about telling the truth, but irony of ironies. The one person I care most about will never hear the truth from me because I don't have the guts to tell her. The powers that be are everywhere. They take your loved ones away from you. Who wrote this drivel? Nobody. The talk show host said it. Our Chicago monitors picked it up. WLNJ Radio is a new talk show host. He's railing against us. Calls himself the middle man. Hmm. The middle. The center. You think? I want a sweeper team out there. Already dispatched two. So are we back? Meaning. Oh, well, I just heard that you were making plans with the shop teacher. Lyle. Yeah, she's right here. Security in Concourse Four. Shop teachers here. This place is locked up like Alcatraz. What are you doing here? You didn't mean what you said. That wasn't you talking. It was your father. It was this place, whatever the hell this place is. It's so easy for you, isn't it? You waltz into somebody's life, rip it apart like it was some damn remodeling job, keep your favorite parts, but throw out the rest. No consequences. No commitment. This is a commitment. Can't you see that? I see someone whose only connection to the world is an empty house, a box of nails, and a rusted pickup truck. I don't have that luxury. I have obligations. I have relationships. Obligations? Relationships? You make it sound so personal, so warm. All your mail is stamped occupant. Your, your, your phone number's unlisted, and I have yet to meet even one of your so-called friends. I have a life. Which you refuse to share. It's not a life, Parker. It's a life sentence. Parker! Please, don't make me leave part of my life here. Please.
I'm sorry. I, I don't want to hurt you, Tommy. No. It's for me. You got another clever message from me? I only wanted you to know that Thomas was selling. From the sound of your voice, you've already discussed it. Yeah. He's moving to Oregon. He wants me to go with him. So go. <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you? It's too late anyway. You picked a fight with him, didn't you? This isn't what you want, Miss Parker. Why does everybody suddenly know what I want? Your mother always knew. She was trying to leave the center the day she was killed. She wanted to take you as far away from there as possible. That's what Thomas wants. It's no coincidence. Federal archives were a gold mine. Pavlov is Colonel Willard Spence. Spence? He was one of my superiors. And after he got you transferred, he intensified his drug experiments. I did a bunch of shows on the subject when I first got on the air. Now the army was pumping these soldiers full of potentially lethal experimental drugs without telling them. Well, your shows got the army nervous. They shut Spence down. Some families tried to sue, but of course they lost. The brass conducted an internal investigation. They convicted Spence and locked him up in Leavenworth for seven years. It's a long time. Time enough to develop a heck of a grudge. He blames you and your radio show. Or ratting him out. Jared, his parole office is in Olympia Fields. That's close to Patty. We'll find him. Army intelligence. Very clever contradiction of terms. I suspect you're a very clever man. You know, I've been tracking reports of another clever person. Very mysterious. Shows up at unexpected spots. Always there to help the needy and the abused. Didn't think I'd tell my secrets to any schmo, did you? Why didn't you expose me on the air? Nah. No, I only go after bad conspiracies. Neil? Hi. Oh, it's good to see you. I'm so glad you're okay. There were some people down at the station they asked for Jared. Guys in suits, one answering to the name Sam. Sweepers. Who are they? The powers that be. So the sweeper team's already in place in Chicago, and we're still stuck waiting in Blue Cove. The one at the center has seen Miss Parker, and she's not answering her cell phone. Well, that's it. Mm -hmm. We're out of here. Lyle. She made her decision, Doctor. I'm making mine. Yeah, this is Lyle. Let's go. It's another deep, dark night out there, and you're back for another session with the middleman. And my guest, Neil Roberts. Thanks for subbing for me, middleman. Well, I'm just glad that our wacko friend Pavlov wasn't able to hurt you. 
Mr. Lau, Karen must have gotten upstairs through another entrance. The show's already started. Oh, look who's on line one. Go ahead, Pavlov. You shouldn't have done this. Why not? Neil's ready. Come down to the studio and get your revenge. Pass your sentence, PTV. I will. But not where you expect. Oh, that's right. You're an enigma wrapped up in a paradox. Or is it the other way around? The powers that be don't call the shots anymore. We always call the shots, orphan boy. That's why they call us the powers that be. Well, look here. The powers that aren't. Funny thing about traps, they don't discriminate between the hunter and the hunted. I'm sorry to have stolen your metaphor, but it really is perfect. Rat, trap, rat, trap. Gotcha. Let me out of here. You really stepped into this one, didn't you, Pavlov? Or should I call you Doctor? Dr. Willard Spence. Let me out! I wonder how many times Patricia Marie said that to herself. She was one of your victims. You just trapped her in a different kind of way. Look. Pictures of human lab rats. People that you decided didn't deserve to know the truth. Lab rats. Guinea pigs. Human experiments. People! I went to prison for that! You don't know the first thing about prison! Sometimes the worst kind of prison is the kind that you have to wake up to every morning. When you think you're out free in the world, and you're being hunted and stalked. That's what you did to Neil Roberts, isn't it? Just because he told the truth. You look a little pale, Doctor. It's a good thing I read your file. Diabetes. What a shame. And it's about time for your insulin shot. Uh, before you do that, I should warn you. Only one of those syringes contain insulin. The other two. A potentially lethal experimental drug. But whatever is good enough for Dr. Spence's subjects is good enough for him. Mm. Sugar. Yum. Oh, you're crazy! You could try that eeny, meeny, miny, mo thing. But I gotta tell you, as a probability quotient, it kind of sucks. Good luck picking. No, wait, wait! I'll die! I'm giving you a better chance than you gave Neil Roberts. Have fun playing spin the syringe. Okay! Okay! I stalked him! I wanted to kill him! He ruined my life! I swear that I would ruin his! Which one has the insulin? Actually, all three of them do. Enjoy the cheese. I him. Neil's next show. I wanted to kill him. It's gonna be a real doozy. Good evening, Chicago. Uncle Neil is back. And in hey. this piece, I'm happy to say. It's the voice. Once again, I'd I like know to that thank voice. You filling in for me during the... It's him, isn't it? And we're going to be clearing the phone lines here. And he's expecting me. Before we get to the phones, I need to take care of some very personal business. There's 
something I have been wanting to tell a special someone for a very long time now. Patty, I only hope that once you've heard the truth, you will forgive me. Something is not right. We'll deal with it together. I'm gonna fix it, man. Remember? <laughs> I guess that makes me your new project. And this one, I'll never sell. Sooner or later, we all hit a crossroads. As some of you know, I recently hit one, a big one. But I made it through, thanks to a new friend. I know you're out there listening, middleman. You watch your back, and don't ever quit. Because somewhere up ahead, you'll find your crossroads. Good night, Chicago. <laughs>